Hey, it's Jake Mace with Phoenix Longevity Arts. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the five things I believe every martial artist should master in order to live a long and healthy life with martial arts at the center and core of that life. And so the first thing that each martial artist, and in my particular case Kung Fu, must do to become a true master is have perfect fundamentals, or at least strive for perfection. And so in my school what that means is that I, I tell my beginners that we must kick for fundamentals. And so we have front kicks, we have side kicks, we have roundhouse kicks and hook kicks. And those are the four kicks that form the, uh, the basis of all kicks we do in Kung Fu. And they have to be fundamentally sound, okay? There is also fundamentals of stances. We talk about horse stance, bow stance, and cat stance. And those form the fundamentals and the basis of all other stances. And they also serve to strengthen our legs tremendously. And the last thing is fundamentals of Actually, there's two more things. Fundamentals of punches, which is we talk about straight punch, we have palm strikes, we have ridge hands, we have back fists, and we have uh, cross punches like left cross or right cross. And we have to be fundamentally sound with all of our punches and hand techniques. And the last thing we talk about is joint manipulation, things such as arm bars um, and chokes. We have to have uh, a major, essential, fundamental background of chin na, which is the Chinese version of submission and joint manipulation. So that's number one. The uh, fundamentals must be strong in kicks, stances, punches, and submission slash joint manipulation. Number two is daily qigong practice. And so I really believe in tai chi, xing yi, bagua, uh, or really meditation. Anything that involves you uh, kind of becoming more comfortable in your own skin and really getting a chance to turn off technology, even though it's wonderful, turn off technology once in a while and come back to a natural state. And we do this in Kung Fu with Qigong, whether it's Yi Jin Jing Qigong, the muscle tendon change, whether it's eight brocades, or whether it's things like Bagua, Xing Yi, or Tai Chi, those are all forms of Qigong. We can practice these areas daily to really improve our mind-body connection and refresh the body, the spirit, the mind, and bring ourselves back to a healthy, natural state so that we can apply this state toward anything we do, whether it's business, love, uh, relationships, whether it's goals, whether it's family, no matter what it is, Qigong enables us to be a better human being. Number three is diet. I gotta tell you that uh, if you're in martial arts or self-defense and your primary interest is defending yourself, well, you're doing it because you want longevity, okay? You would only defend yourself if you wanted to live longer. But what happens with most of my friends in the martial arts is that they are so technique oriented and sparring oriented, they never really go after the health side of Kung Fu. And um, they end up getting a little bit overweight, they end up getting unhealthy. Even if they look like they're in shape, their diet is all messed up to where their organs have malfunctions. And so they have 50, 60, 70 years old, they have heart attacks and those are things, heart attacks and strokes, I believe just should not be happening. It's not genetics and it's not old age, it's lifestyle. I really believe that. Even if your genetics say you should do one thing, your lifestyle can really suppress those bad genes and they can activate good genes that will enable you to live longer than your parents did if your lifestyle is clean. And so I do that with a plant-based diet. I've been vegetarian, vegan vegetarian for over a decade since I was a teenager and I still do it very athletically. So I'm very smart about my protein, smart about my uh, variety of foods. And um, even if you can't go full vegetarian or vegan, um, cholesterol, these type of things that have been shown to impact the body negatively, such as the LDL cholesterol, the lousy stuff. We want to increase our HDL cholesterol and we want to decrease our LDL cholesterol because HDL is the healthy cholesterol. And so doing this with healthy fats, healthy cholesterols, healthy oils like nuts and avocados and um, flaxseed oil, things like that are all healthy stuff. And, um, the bad cholesterol, the LDL stuff, can only be found in animal products. And so why not cut it out altogether? That's my philosophy. It might not be good for you, but it's good for me. And so um, I uh, try to be as healthy, strong, athletic, and youthful as I can, even with having a 100% plant-based diet. Plus, it's good for the animals and good for the earth. The fourth thing is teach someone every day. So I've been running my school, Phoenix Longevity Arts, for over a decade now. And um, I try to teach people every day. So that's essential, especially the younger generation, to keep yourself young. 
you will become who your friends are. So if you hang out with people who are the same age or older than you, you will become older like them. And if you hang out with youthful people that are young and vibrant and full of life, you will become young and vibrant and full of life as well. I'm not saying that if you're old, you're not full of life, but I am saying that a lot of Qigong masters I've talked to believe that teaching someone every day, and especially even going further than that and teaching the younger generation is one of the keys and one of the, um, one of the fountains of youth, as it were. So teaching someone every day, and especially teaching someone every day until they have it down. So I often tell my students that you'll know you're getting skillful with Kung Fu when you can teach someone else the Kung Fu that you're learning to where they have it down without you even being there. Then you know that you're a good teacher and your skills with that particular technique will improve dramatically. And the fifth area is um, that I like to live by as uh, trying to attain mastery in the martial arts is goals and other interests. So uh, Chen Men Ching, the famous Tai Chi master, talked about being a master of the five excellences. And what I interpret that to mean is just having five things or more that you're striving to become a master at. And so Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Qigong, these could be one or three of those areas. But for me, I love Kung Fu and love Tai Chi, but it's not, uh, it's not what consumes me in my life. It's what I do for a living and what I really enjoy doing, but I have other interests and some of them are gardening. I, I'm trying to grow enough food in my humble house in Tempe, Arizona, a normal sized house in suburbia, grow enough food there to live off of 100% of the time. So we'll see if in the next couple of years I can be successful of literally eating off my land with only having about, you know, uh, between a third and half an acre of land in Tempe, Arizona. I love studying Chinese language. Um, it's what I did in college and what I continue to try to practice today. I love traveling the world, especially to um, uh, Asia, such as China, Inner Mongolia, Hong Kong. I love these Asian countries. They're so historic and interesting. Um, I really should do better at traveling to Europe because um, I have neglected other countries in favor of China uh, because of the Kung Fu thing. Um, I love animals. I adopt animals. Um, I have chickens. I have dogs. I have cats. I have tortoises. I have rabbits, all adopted and saved. Um, and uh, my fiance and I, Pamela, are compassionate toward animals. It's one of our interests. And then golf. I, I love the game of golf. Even though the game of golf can be very um, poor for the environment, um, I figure that it's one of the things that do, I can do to improve my focus, improve my health, and maybe one day I can even take my interest with environmentalism, animals, and vegetarianism and improve the game of golf as well. That'd be one of my interests in the future. So, other goals and other interests. Um, let's recap. We have fundamentals. We have Qigong on a daily basis. We have a diet because the real killer in the martial arts is not the person who will be punching and kicking you, but it is the silent killer that will attack your heart. No amount of jujitsu, no amount of taekwondo, no amount of karate, and definitely no amount of kung fu or qigong will save you when the heart attack or the stroke comes knocking. Okay. Number four is teach someone every day, and especially the younger generation. And number five is other goals and interests that are healthy goals and interests that strive you to become a better, more evolved, and more compassionate human being to yourself and to your community. So if you master these five things, I believe you're well on your way to becoming a real martial art master because uh, we all know that uh, the martial art master for me that really inspired me to get in the martial arts was Mr. Miyagi, of course. Mr. Miyagi had other interests such as bonsai. He was a, a gardener himself. So strive for those other interests and it'll make your kung fu much, much better. This is Jake May signing off. Thanks for watching and good luck putting together your list of the five things that make you a martial art master.